today we are in Brooklyn and we're going to the Brooklyn Comic Invasion. One of our subscribers, the biggest skate man fan in the world, recommended it when we yesterday. were at yes, yesterday when we were at Midtown Comics. So we have no idea what to expect from this. It's free. Let's see what's inside. We took a trip over the Verrazano Bridge to attend our first Queen Comic Party Brooklyn Invasion. It was our first time, but they were celebrating their three-year anniversary. They even had a cake. And they said that the cake was amazing, so when they took it out... It was a big thing when they took yeah. the cake out. But it said, it had the words, don't stress to be perfect. And then they were telling a funny story of how... When the they, cover of Turok was on the cake. Yeah, when they asked to have the cake made, they were like, oh, don't stress about it. And they, the cake makers took that to put that on the cake. There you go. Mistakenly. And they took it as it was and served it and everybody was eating cake. It was pretty cool. Everyone this was laughing. convention was suggested to us by the world's biggest skate man guy and subscriber to Collectors from Confessions. Please stay till the end of this. We're going to do a giveaway in this video. We haven't done a giveaway on one of our convention videos in quite some time. So we're going to do a giveaway. I made a mistake. You guys are going to benefit from my mistake. This was a cool convention because everybody was very friendly. And But as you may have noticed from the intro, the show was very small. It did not look like much walking up to it. I was a little nervous, actually. I yeah. was like, oh, how... Small it was it, the the thing was strange. I don't know if you want to call if we want to call it a party or a show or a convention. You guys pick. Tell me how you want to name it. They call it a party. It's very small, but it there was, was about mine. twelve vendors, and perfectly said, I it mean, was Brooklyn Invasion. What it lacked in size, it made up for in the amount of deals and the amount of comic books at great prices that they had. It was as good as any convention we've been to in the last couple of years. The deals were just out of control, and it was no admission. It was free, it was free. to get in, and for free. And it felt it felt we so like much free. more like like a community. I yeah. mean, you can't be uh, amazing and nice dealers. Yeah, we were chatting with a bunch of them. We actually stood and talked to some of them. They one of the vendors graduated from the same high school as Cassidy. We were chatting with her for a little while. It was just, it was very, it was a very comfort, comfortable uh, show. Really nice. All the vendors were willing to make deals on anything that they had. Um, but before we get into the comics, let's talk about the venue. It was very interesting. It's held at 148 Frost Street in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. They have concerts there and other events, including wrestling, extremely serious wrestling, or the XXXSW has events there. I've never heard of it before. It's a small promotion. So when it's not a comic party, it's a bunch of other things. Drag shows. Drag shows. It's an event space, but, it's, a, but a very small event space. It's very, very interesting. The walls were, were painted interesting. Yeah, it, it had art all over Yeah, it, it reminds me of um, the convention I went to back in the 1980s that were held in basements. So it was like a basement convention. It's not like your normal convention space. So Definitely. I love these type of shows because it not only does it bring me back to when I was a kid and going to these, but I get to bring Cassie to them and she gets to experience not the big glitz and glamour of New York Comic Con, but these little 
I don't want to say dinky, but these little conventions that are just filled with nice people. It's basically what it is, filled with nice people. If you've never been to a small comic convention, I highly recommend it. The people that are n as nice as you could amend. There's no nonsense. It's everybody is chatting with each, with each other. The people shopping, the vendors. It's just, it's really comforting. And there was free cake, so. And these conventions are definitely made for comic collectors. Yes. I mean... There was basically only comics. There was a few collectibles, but only yeah. one Yeah, and that some, some of the collectibles I actually should have bought when they had a Marvel Legends Fantastic Four 2-pack. I passed on it. I probably should have bought it. it it's Spider-Man in his Fantastic Four gear and Wolverine. They also had a patch and a Joe Fix-It 2-pack that Brian's been trying to convince me to get. And they had another X-Men one. They were all awesome. I passed on it. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, you were focused on comics. Yes, that's it. The comic <laughs> deals are what really highlight this party, not toys. So I wasn't looking for toys at this one. I really was focused on comics. Um, we went through a lot of boxes. And a lot of dollar bins. A lot of dollar bins. A lot of um, higher end stuff that was priced to sell. Um, one of the dollar bins had Captain Canuck in there. And if you have Captain Canuck comics, I'm cool with you because Richard Comley, the creative Captain Canuck, is a friend of the show. We interviewed him. He's a great guy. Glad to see people selling his stuff in the States. Usually you only find it up north in Canada. Make, makes me happy every time I see it. Um, they also had, a, one of the vendors had this weird box. It said cheap and weird stuff. And the first comic in there was a reprint of um, Spider-Man number one. And he was jokingly selling it for like $8,000. He wasn't really selling it for $8,000. It was a joke that he was selling it. It was the weird part on it. Finally, we saw these um, Godzilla books that Brian would have loved. It's pictures from the actual movies. I had never seen them before. They're in Japanese. I have to give Brian the card from the vendor because he's going to actually try to see if he can get them and maybe might see them at the, their next show. The next show that they're having is in Queens. Um, the Brooklyn show is going to take a little break for a while because they're going to be either changing ven venues or they're redoing this venue, which is kind of sad because it has a nice feel to it. But the convention as a whole, I'm so glad we went. I was a little reluctant. I don't like driving over the Verrazano Bridge just because of the traffic and when we were coming home recently from Queens we saw that there was an accident and it was like it was like a two hour delay going into Brooklyn so traffic. you never know coming from Staten Island when you go to Brooklyn what you're gonna hit we were lucky we didn't hit anything it was I will definitely there's no question in my mind next time they have this convention I'm going it was definitely worth it and you'll see from I definitely got a bang for your buck you see from my stack and my stack is not filled with a lot of dollar books I bought a lot of wall books so i bought wall books and some key issues you'll see what so let's go over a haul cassidy gets to start us off with her haul okay. this is her haul this is my haul my one comic book so he actually found this while he was looking i really only look for his comics because again there was some star wars in the bins but they were priced a, too high, high. than i You're, want they yeah. were they weren't well, in you the don't dollar bins. really want the older ones you want more of the newer Star Wars stuff. The older yeah, comics sell I, I mean, for a lot I of money. I have some Star Wars comics that I need to organize, but yeah, they weren't in the dollar bins, so I wasn't gonna pay twenty upwards of twenty dollars for a single comic. Cassidy buys comics from fandoms that she likes, like Star Wars and yeah, whatever and this is. I got a Doctor Who comic, so we have been seeing a few more Doctor Who comics as we're looking. Still not that many. I don't know why I don't collect them. I just, I love Doctor Who stories. I should probably read the comic books. I don't, it's just not something I have collected. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes when we're at conventions, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for you. I'll buy this and I look for one her too, comic. So. No, she can buy as many as she wants. I, you just, she actually paid for some of mine this time, so. So that was my one. So let's see what the haul is. You can comment on any of these when we talk, Cassidy. Uh, from the Dalbins, Blood Pack number one, a title I am not familiar with, but it looked like from those cool 90s big muscled superheroes number Still one not enough comic collections number have. two there will never be enough the ray it always gets me with the the shiny, shiny covers <laughs> gets me every time these are the ones brian likes too the ray number one this was one of the ones i found because the dollar bins were not really organized they were all over the place and when they're all over the place it forces you to go through them and you never know what you're going to find and i found this this is the Century Superhero Stamp Album. I have never heard of this before. They made 10 issues of this. Each issue deals with a different decade. This is 1900 to 1909. So they'd have one from 1910 to 1919 and so on and so forth. All the way to the 90s, I believe. So I'm going to keep an eye out for the rest of these. I have never seen these before. I'm not sure I'm ever going to see them again. So 
this may be a long, long, long process. That's my DC haul, which is a small part of the haul. The Marvel haul, predominantly Fantastic Four, is much bigger. She-Hulk number eight variant cover. Howard the Duck. Love the, love the cover, so we like Howard the Duck here. Cassidy found this one for me. Captain America and the Falcon 137. This is key number one. This is the first meeting between Spider-Man and the Falcon. You, have, you don't know that Falcon costume, do you, Cassidy? I learned what key means, though, in comic books. There you go. <laughs> Falcon originally wore a green costume, not the one that we know him by. Cassidy also found this one, Captain America 213. This is key number two, the first appearance of Night Flyer. That's Night Flyer. Cassidy's getting more experience with finding comic books. Well, I know to look for the older ones. <laughs> Alpha Flight number 110. This is key number three. This is the first appearance of the all-new Omega Flight. So what happens is Cassidy gets a list, a printed list of comics that I'm looking for that we keep updating. And if she doesn't see anything, she takes my phone and uses my phone. I t I, what I do is I look for, the, for comics that are under a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's how I was taught. And anything 25 cents or lower we buy. Avengers West Coast 69. 69, dudes! This is Hawkeye vs. U.S. Agent. Avengers 132. Cool cover they're fighting. Looks like... There was a lot of Avengers. A lot of Avengers. And we, we bought a lot of old, lot of A lot of Marvel comics at this convention. Not yeah. as many DC as Marvel. A lot of Marvel filled bins where it was Spider-Man bin, X-Men bin. But then they didn't have DC that you collect as much. <laughs> they like did they not. had a good amount of Superman, Batman. They did. But that's not what we look for. <coughs> <coughs> Coughing my head off here. Avengers number 141. This is key number four. It's the first George Perez Avengers issue and they're fighting the Squadron Supreme or Squadron Sinister at the time. One of my favorite villain groups. Avengers 182. Avengers are fighting each other. Never enough Avengers. Avengers 274. Much later issue. The Incredible Hulk 283. With the Avengers. These are all dollar bin issues. Thor 236. Also from the dollar bins. This was a half price purchase, so it was only 250. X-Men 156. This is key number five. It's the first appearance of Ancanti, and it's the origin of Corsiar. Right there. The Star Jammers. Right? I like them. This is a great. 250 is a great price for this comic. Also started collecting this FF series, Marvel Now. It's done by Mike Allred, who we love here. He did an interview with us. Mike's a great guy. He has issue two. We will buy any comics we see of his. Three. Look at how great these covers are by Mike. Seven. I really like how he draws a She-Hulk. Ten. I literally just collected, started collecting the series on our trip to... Um, Midtown. 11. And now let's look at some of the big boys I bought. I bought a number of really low Fantastic Four issues for really good prices. I usually just look for... Fantastic Four is like the one that I look for mostly for yeah. you. Because I know that that's I your have big to, collection. And that's not even right on now. the list. I have to add them to the list. I was thinking about when I was cataloging these. Fantastic Four is going on the list. Fantastic Four number 31. This is key number six. It's the first appearance of Dr. Franklin Storm. If you watched our episode on Midtown, I bought the death of Dr. Franklin Storm. This is his first appearance. And this is one of your now earliest. One, one of my earliest ones, yes. 31 Fantastic is one of the earliest Fours. Fantastic Fours. Fantastic Four number 47. This is key number seven. It's the first appearance of Maximus and Attilian. It's the second appearance of Black Bolt and the first mention of Galactus. This is a really cool issue, and if you would like, you can own one because I accidentally <laughs> bought two from two separate vendors. So if you would like to own this copy, it could be yours. All you need to do is be a subscriber, 
like this video and comment below. You can comment anything. You're going to be entered no matter what you comment. And in a couple of weeks, I will draw a winner and this will be mailed to you. Again, look at what this comic book holds. It's the first mention of Galactus. It's the second Black Bolt. It's the first Maximus. This is a key and an early 12 cent Fantastic Four. Could be yours. My mistake is your gain. Fantastic Four 54. Key number eight. It's the third appearance of the Black Panther. All of these were cheap too. They were not Reasonable. too expensive. Yeah, they were, and they were deals on them. So if I bought more than one, I bought two or three from the dealer. He gave me like a fantastic. See, because with these types of small conventions, you can barter. They're looking to sell. Yeah, you can barter with these sellers. Whereas at big conventions like New York Comic Con, no they deals. know people are gonna buy it. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna sell gonna it. They're gonna really sell it over the weekend. So maybe so. Sunday you can get deals, but at a so convention they, like this, they were making some good deals. So the prices that they were marked, we most often None of them not applied. Fantastic Four 59. This is key number nine. As you see, Fantastic Four early days, lots of keys. This is a Black Bolt, Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer appearance, all in the same comic. This was not $15. It was cheaper than that, and 15 is cheap to begin with for that. Fantastic Four 137. This was in a dollar bin. As was this, Fantastic Four 163. And finally, Fantastic Four 240, and the final key, this is key number 10. It's the first appearance of Luna Maximoff. That, that is of keys. a lot of Fantastic Four. Let's look at all the Fantastic Four we got. These are all Fantastic Four. Look at that. Nice Fantastic We did We did a Fantastic Four convention in Brooklyn, so... We will definitely be attending this convention again whether it's in queens or in brooklyn we're definitely going to show up again thank you uh jason for suggesting it um, we would have never gone we, if I, we would have never would known never about have it gone or known it. about it it's a small convention didn't see anything about it online in my feed he mentioned it we went he's the biggest skate man fan in the world couldn't find a skate man issue for him but you know brian's trying to compete so thank you again thanks for setting us up with this thanks he was a vendor there we got to talk to him for a while Perfect convention for us. We had a really good time. Thanks for watching. Love what you collect. Collect what you love. We'll see you next time. Maybe in Queens or Brooklyn. We would be honored if you would join us.